Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at Morphe's with a Remington rolling block. But it's not an ordinary one. This is a rolling block that has some really interesting design elements to it. And the exact provenance of this rifle is a bit of a mystery, but there's a lot of evidence here, and I think we can safely do a little bit of speculation. Now, uh, I'm sure most of you are familiar with the Remington rolling block. These were manufactured under contract for a huge number of countries. Like, this was kind of the Mauser K98K of the 1870s. Uh, if you look at what middle and small uh, military forces around the world were buying as their modern new breech-loading firearms, just like a ton of countries bought Mausers in the 1930s, a ton of countries bought Remington rolling blocks in the late 1800s. However, uh, rolling blocks were not just made from scratch as complete rifles to sell to militaries. There were also a lot of rolling blocks that were transformed from muskets. Just like we think of the trapdoor Springfield system as originating as a way to convert existing muzzle-loading rifles into new modern breech loaders, well the Remington rolling block is an obvious candidate for that sort of conversion as well. Um, and this was done by Remington commercially, it was done by Springfield Armory, and it was done by a number of, well, a in potentially infinite number of small gunsmith shops who could get their hands on an old musket that was obsolete and get their hands on a new Remington rolling block action from Remington and build the two into a rifle that was cheaper than buying a wholly brand new breech loading rifle. That is definitely what we have here. What makes this rifle particularly interesting is what it appears to have been converted from. And that is a Gilliam and Miller rifle. Gilliam and Miller was one of the small uh, Confederate armories or companies that uh, got a contract with the Confederate government to provide uh, firearms during the US Civil War. The Confederate arms industry was essentially a complete disaster. Uh, they had a tremendous amount of trouble actually producing anything of real quality or value. Gilliam and Miller is no exception. Uh, they got a contract to make 2,000 rifles, uh, and they were able to produce a grand total, well they were able to get accepted, a grand total of 677, uh, plus another 200 or so that they delivered but were rejected for poor quality. Uh, they're extremely scarce rifles today. There are only a couple of surviving examples known, because in the aftermath of the Civil War, any firearms that were left in the South tended to have a really significant practical value, and nobody down there was really collecting military arms from the recent unpleasantness. And so Confederate small arms tended to be used, and then also tended to be updated and modified, like this one. So. Let's take a closer look at it, and let me show you the various elements that indicate, because I can't prove this is a Gilliam and Miller conversion, but it seems really likely. Let's take a closer look. All right, here's our action. Uh, typical Remington rolling block. You have the hammer, and you have the breech block. It's called the rolling block because, of course, it is a rotating sort of action. Now, as evidenced by the curvature here, what we have is a very early pattern of rolling block action. Uh, and then, interestingly, you can see the firing pin is down there at the bottom. This is a center fire breech block that was converted to rim fire. Uh, and there are a bunch of implications of that. When Remington, in particular, did these conversions originally, transformations of muskets into rolling blocks, they typically left the bore intact. The bores would have been 58 caliber, and these would have been things like Springfield 1861 and 1863 muskets, uh, 1841 Mississippi rifles. Uh, the bores were left intact and rechambered for the 58 Berdan cartridge, just for ease of and the economy of conversion. And that Berdan cartridge was actually a little bit bigger, uh, the rim was, than the breech block. So you'll find those with these extra ears on the side of the breech block. Um, early ones had a, a, an extra plate put into the center of the breech block to make it wider. Later ones they made the breech block integrally with that extension. This doesn't have it because it doesn't need it, because I believe, though I can't prove it, uh, that this one is chambered for the 56 Spencer cartridge, or 52, 5652 Spencer. That certainly explains the rim fire firing pin. Unlike the bulk of the commercial Remington conversions, for example, 
this one has very clearly had the barrel sleeved. You can see the, the line there between the original barrel and the new sleeve, and that is 52 caliber now. Uh, would have originally been 577 caliber, as made by Gillam and Miller. So that's what we're looking at mechanically, uh, a rim fire, probably 52 Spencer uh, conversion. Now if we look at some of the features out on the barrel, because of course the action here came from Remington, it's got Remington's markings on it, and there's no question about that. One of the features that we could use to help identify what, what the converted musket originally was would be the rear sight. However, the rear sight here has been very clearly replaced as a part of the transformation. This is an 1855 style pattern of, of rear sight, so that doesn't really tell us anything. Now if we take a look at the general spacing and configuration of the furniture out here, this starts to point towards Gillam and Miller. We have brass furniture, uh, two barrel bands, the front sight has broken off, unfortunately, but it was originally a brass front sight, which would also fit for Gillam and Miller. The spacing and style of the bands is correct. And then one of the real giveaways here is the nose cap. The, the style of brass nose cap and the, the contour of the front of the stock is fairly distinctive to Gillam and Miller, and more importantly it doesn't fit most of the major patterns of, of muskets that were used for this sort of conversion. Um, there is a cleaning rod channel, which there would have originally been, uh, and it was not filled, for better or worse, as part of the conversion. And then we have a pair of brass rivets here, and that's probably the most significant piece of evidence in identifying what this came from, because that style of, of riveted attachment of the nose cap is really pretty distinctive and unusual, and it is something that Gillam and Miller did. So to me that kind of nails it down pretty effectively. Uh, this is a gun that was transformed from a Gillam and Miller uh, musket into a Remington rolling block. I don't think this would have been done by a large company, it, definitely not Springfield, I don't, to me it doesn't make sense that Remington would do this. This to me looks very much like the work of a small gunsmith who probably has a customer in the south who got their hands on uh, an old Civil War army rifle. After, uh, after hostilities concluded, and wanted to convert it to something a little bit more modern, you can save a lot of money if you already have a barrel, already have the wood, uh, the furniture there. And so this gunsmith converted it, and converted it to a cartridge that was available at the time. The, the Spencer cartridge saw fairly extensive use during the Civil War, and it would have been one of the early cartridges that was more readily available. Uh, to the, the commercial, on the commercial market, to the civilian populace. Personally, I really enjoy guns like this one that just show this physical mechanical evidence of having gone through transformations and gone through different periods in history. A rifle that starts off as a Confederate military long arm, and then turns into what was probably a, a relatively poor southern farmer's practical hunting rifle. Uh, something chambered for a cartridge that was would have been available to him at the time, like the Spencer Rimfire cartridge. So uh, a big thanks to Morphe's for giving me access to this rifle to film for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.